Welcome to Little Wars TV. I'm Steve, this is Tom, and it's time for another one of our rules reviews. This week we're going to be talking about General Quarters 3 from Old Dominion Gameworks, which is a rule set that allows you to recreate battles in World War II on the high seas. Uh, this rule set was published in 2006, and we're going to take some time today to talk about it with you, what we like about it and what we don't like. But before we get into that, let me remind you how we run our uh, reviews here. We grade every rule set on five different categories. Now, they are weighted, so it's not simply adding up the scores to get the final result. So, without any further ado, Tom, if you're ready, shall we get into it? Certainly. Uh, looking at presentation first, uh, to be honest, it's it's a little old school. Uh, the production values are are uh, you know fairly limited uh, today, and I'm not a huge fan of the big glossy ones today, where it seems to be mostly filler. The thing you would notice about it is um, that it's a lot of words on a lot of technical pages. It looks like a Navy manual, some type. Um, but uh, but the gist of it is that uh, the first few pages really give you most of what you need to know, except for the unusual circumstances. Yeah, I, I would agree, and certainly production is the lowest score that I give uh, GQ3 out of the five. And, you know, you can see a typical page. <laughs> look look at this. I mean, that's just, it's it's wall of text all the way through. That being said, it's pretty well organized. Yeah, it's I well mean, written. You can, you, it's you well can written. find, if you need a rule, you can find those rules, and it is very well written. I think the other thing that I have to ding them on is, you know, while I'm like you, I don't necessarily need the big, glossy, hardbound rule set. I've talked about the joys of, uh, of ring binding in, in the past. There's really only one option to buy this, uh, buy this rule set. It's $40. It's, it's loose leaf. Mm -hmm. if you buy it bound at a convention or you have it sent to you, it's loose leaf. You have to provide your own binder. And uh, basically the, the nicest part of it is the cardboard cover. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's about it from a visual standpoint. Uh, although they do have some full color charts that will come along with it. And we'll talk a little bit more about those. So production wise, I, I do think it falls a, a little short from what I'd like, but it's good enough for, for what you needed to do. And you do get the full color charts. So I, I give it a seven in production. How about you? Uh, yeah, I, I gave it a six, actually. But, uh, That's fair. In the same range. So our next category is playability, and this is one of our two most important categories. And this is really an area where I think GQ3 shines, and is really one of the reasons why it is my favorite World War II naval rule set. Uh, and, and I'm going to start with... And really, you can say this about just about any naval game, any modern naval game. It's very easy to get into. You don't need a lot of miniatures. You can have a fantastic game of GQ3 with only three or four ships per side. And so even if you buy the fanciest, nicest, most expensive miniatures out there, uh, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to do it. And as far as terrain... Well, a, a blue tablecloth works pretty darn well. So, you know, it, it, from that perspective, very easy uh, to get into. Uh, from a rules perspective, as much as, as we just talked about how, you know, it looks like a technical manual and everything, I alluded to the fact that it's modular. You can use as many or as few of the rules as you like to make your game as complicated as you want. And so I think it's also very interesting how you look at what looks to be a very technical game and it actually ends up being fairly straightforward and flows well. And I think a, an excellent ex example are these charts. This is this is a, the Kriegsmarine gunnery chart I have right here. And this looks incredibly intimidating. When I first brought this rule system into the club, everybody else was afraid to play it because they looked at this and they thought it was going to be a nightmare. The fact is, if you're controlling a couple ships, you may only need to look at one or two of these columns. And you may only need to know two or three of these modifiers. And in five minutes, you've learned how to play the game, at least the basic gunnery aspect to it. I, I always think when I'm playing this game that I must be forgetting something because it really flows. You know, once you start going, you start moving ships and certainly get into gunnery, it's, uh, it really flows very well. Uh, certainly when you add in subs yeah. or torpedoes or the rare occasions for air, you know, it can get a bit complicated, but no more than any other system. Uh, if there is one downfall, I think, to the system, uh, it's that it really doesn't handle, or I should say it doesn't scale well if you get to really, really large naval engagements. Now, in the time period that we're talking about, there really aren't that many uh, naval engagements that I would consider to be too large. Uh, we've done some hypothetical scenarios in the mm -hmm. club where there have been as upwards of 20 uh, ships per side. And I, th I thought at that point it really started to bog down. Sure. So from a playability standpoint, uh, I love this rule set. I'll just tell you that right up front. And there are going to be a couple of these. I'm giving it a 10. I am giving it a 10. 
Well, I'll give it an eight, only because I've never given a ten. Well, but, you, you got to break the seal. But Tom. you are break a break the seal. You you certainly are a big proponent of this, and I think uh, every time I've played it, uh, it's been a great time. Uh, all right, uh, turning to mechanics, um, you know, it's a naval game. Uh, getting ships moving, uh, keeping them in somewhat, you know, uh, order, uh, a maritime order, I guess, uh, that would be beneficial to the game is is sometimes a challenge if you've never played naval, but Otherwise, I think uh, the movement is very clean. Uh, the turning radiuses are, are quite good uh, for making turns. There's nothing elaborate. Um, you know, it's not like Age of Sail, uh, where you have to worry about the wind. <laughs> the or, wind and <laughs> irons. <laughs> right. Having engines are, is nice. Right. Uh, so so the, the mechanics of movement, I think, are very straightforward. Uh, learning your individual ships a little bit, knowing acceleration, deceleration, regarding destroyers and, and line ships, you know, maybe a small factor, but, uh, you know, I think it's, it's very clean. Um, and uh, the command and control is essentially, um, you know, you, you fill out your movement orders. They're very simple. It it's, doesn't take much to do that. Um, and so that's one case where I think it really shines for a lot of, I love orders in rules. But most of the ones I end up doing, it's halfway through, you're like, uh, it's just, they, they go by the wayside. Here you don't do that uh, because one, they're just so simple to do, uh -huh. and two, they are they are essential to make sure that uh, you know you you let your command and control. And one of the things I think is is key there, and I know there are plenty of gamers out there who don't like it. Uh, I happen to be of the view that it's great, particularly in a game like this. It's simultaneous plotting Absolutely. and it's secret yeah. plotting. So, you know, the other side, this is not I go, you go. Everybody plots uh, in, in secret what they're doing in a particular turn and then everything is executed uh, simultaneously, at least as far as movement and, and actually fire is mm -hmm. resolved simultaneously as well. Though obviously someone's gonna have to roll before the others. And I think that gives much more of an authentic feel than a lot of other game systems out there where it's like one side moves all of their stuff and then the other side can react to it. Or even some of the rule sets out there where one side moves half, then the, the opposing side moves whole. Naval combat is fluid, and not just because it's in water. Naval combat moves, there are ebbs, there are flows, and, and you have to be able to predict what your opponent is going to do a few turns ahead of time, and by plotting things simultaneously without knowing what the other side is doing, even in that turn where you're going to be firing, I think it recreates that a little bit better than mm -hmm. some other rule sets. Mm -hmm. And uh, firing is very straightforward. I, I showed you the firing chart earlier. You're basically looking at range, armor penetration, and you know then the chart tells you what you need to roll. Uh, it, then torpedoes are actually even even more interesting to me, and, and goes back to kind of the modularity of the rule set. Uh, there's there's two. I think there's a there's a pseudo third option, but there's definitely two different options for how you can handle torpedoes, and it's really up to you to decide what level of granularity you want. You can. They do have a rule system in here where you get out the protractor and the string, and you, you fire at particular angles and, and measure things very carefully, and then you roll on a, on a d12 to see if you actually have a, a, an explosive impact even if they intersect the line that uh, that you've drawn for your torpedo's path. Or you can just choose an arc. You fire in a particular arc, and if someone falls within that arc, then instead of rolling a d12, you roll a d20. So it's just a change of the dice, but can really streamline things. Uh, so are you more interested in testing your skill or your luck? It gives you both. Uh, neither one is particularly difficult. One takes a little bit more time than the other, but uh, that's an example of the elegance of the system, I think, and the ability to change depending on what kind of gamer you are. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I like about this too and the mechanics here is that while there's record keeping, there has to be, mm -hmm. ships aren't sunk immediately, at least most of the time, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the record keeping is fairly straightforward. Uh, if you're on the table, you can use hit markers or splash markers to uh, elucidate whether you've gotten a penetrating hit or a non-penetrating hit or a miss. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when it comes to the record keeping for the damage, uh, I mean, it can all be done on a card like this. You're, you're crossing damage off as you... Uh, as you take it and monitoring what speed you're able to keep track of. Uh, I laminated these, uh, but uh, you know you can do it, run copies and, and mark it off with pencils and a small clipboard is really all you need. Yeah, it works great and you can manage multiple ships pretty easily with those. What score do you give it? I would give it an eight. Okay, well, I, uh, I actually give it a nine. I ding it a little bit for some of the stuff that you alluded to earlier that I haven't really talked about, which is it, it 
it handles a lot of things really, really, really well. Uh, one thing that I, I don't think, and, and I think part of it is the, the subject matter that it handles really well would be like air attacks, if you're talking about a, a carrier attack, uh, as happens in some of the campaigns that you can run here. Uh, just because it's it's stuck at a weird level where it's not so granular that you're talking about dog fighting in the air like you would in a check your six. Uh, it's not quite to the level of, you know, a plane shows up on the board and you roll a dice and you see if right. they hit. There's a little bit more skill involved, but for those things where we've just basically gamed an airstrike on a surface force, it, it really isn't all that exciting. Next up is historical flavor, uh, which is, is I think, kind of an easy mm. mark to, uh, to get for any naval rule set, right. really. Uh, because every, every historical period when you're talking about naval operations, whether it's Age of Sail, Triremes, or World War II, uh, the ships are the ships. And, you know, I, I guess for historical flavor, what you can look at is does a historical naval rule set reward sound tactics? Right. Does it punish poor tactics? And my answer for, for both of those with GQ3 is an emphatic yes. Yep. If you cross the T, if you, you know, play your torpedoes right and unleash the broadside at the right time, you're, you're going to do well. If you don't, you're not. Right. Absolutely. I think that's a great way to uh, analyze naval uh, characteristics is do they award sound tactics. I think the other thing, it captures pretty well um, the balance of uh, power forces uh, between the early Imperial Japanese Navy and the early U.S. Navy, 1941-42, and the, the different torpedo qualities and the night Excellent fighting. Example. So I think they handle all of that uh, very well. And yeah. so I think you definitely get a sense. Now, uh, frankly, I've spent most of my time in 1942, I think, in, ter <laughs> in terms That's, of... Those are the ships <laughs> I have, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I do know eventually it gets better for the U.S. Yes, the torpedoes do improve. <laughs> also, the Japanese gunfire charts are different. Each nation's gunfire charts are different. Not just the Japanese, but the Japanese uh, also have advantages in night vision. Mm -hmm. uh, not you know for racial reasons like like the Japanese commanders thought, but because they were just they engaged in more training, and that's reflected in the charts. So you know. Even if it's little rules, most of which are reflected on the charts, so you don't even have to really think about it. It's already there for you. Uh, most of the historically accurate details are included, uh, you know, baked into the cake, and yeah. I, I think that's a real strong point. Uh, so for historical flavor, doing it again, give it a 10. I'm going to give it a 9. Because you don't give 10. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> So the support is, um, one, I think there's a pretty good community out there. Like, you go to the conventions and there's always a game or two going on. Uh, Old Dimension is, uh, Old Dominion's at most of the conventions. Um, their website's pretty good. I mean, they've, uh, you can always, once you buy the rules, they're available. Um, you know, they don't disappear. And there's lots and lots of, I think the biggest area of support probably is their campaign, uh, you know, publications. Mm -hmm. They have a fair number of those, you know, whether it's during World War II or even the pre-war period where they let you kind of game out some of the what-ifs if the war would start a little bit earlier. So I'd say that's probably their biggest support area that I think is, is, is quite good. I, I've got to say, probably of all of the rule sets that I've ever played, of all of the companies that I've ever dealt with, uh, Old Dominion does the best job. Uh, their support is phenomenal. Not only do they have the the campaign supplements that you've talked about, you know, the, the Solomon's campaign, I can't recommend highly enough. We've played it through as a club once. I'd love to do it again sometime. Uh, but something you touched on is you buy the game. Not only is it available constantly for you to download as many times as you want, whether you buy the hard copy or not, but they also update the rules when mm -hmm. they when they feel that there's something that needs a, a rules update technically i think they're on what rule gq 3.3 at That's this right. point from a support perspective you know it's it's hard with me you'll 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 see me talking these rule reviews and if there's no support i have no problem giving them a one but if they do everything uh like i think gq3 does here i gotta give them a 10. okay <laughs> You're making me feel guilty now. Uh, that's my, that's my object. The rules that. I, I agree. They do everything anybody could ask them to do. So you're giving them a 10? I'm going to give them a 9. But you see, I'm, but if they I'm can, getting closer. If, they can, if they're doing <laughs> any, everything that someone could... Whatever. <laughs> Final scores. Again, it's not a simple mathematical formula where you add everything up, we weight it, and all of that sort of stuff. But anyway, I end up with a 94. 
uh, as mine, which is, is, you know, obviously very close to a perfect 100 score and very, very high for me. I, I'm the type of person I, I will always, if I don't think a rule set covers something completely for me, I'm always on the lookout for the next great rule set and I'm going to go out and I'm going to try it and I'm going to see if it does something better than what I have right now. When it comes to World War II naval, uh, one of the, the topics that is nearest and dearest to this war gamer's heart, I feel no need to stray from, from GQ3. Um, you know, it, it is... It does everything. It scratches every itch. Uh, it completes me, mm -hmm. Tom, is what it does. And, uh, you know, I, I, maybe you don't feel as strongly, but that's okay because then she's all mine. Uh, no, I, I, you, you've certainly made a very strong uh, case for it, and as I think I have, because I, I feel the same way. I think Just not I think, as strong. Not as strong, but <laughs> maybe it's a little early. But uh, no, I, I do. It's it's not one of those. I have wandering eye when it comes to periods for you know just about any oh i'd love to look at that rule set you know and it's funny because i actually picked up sea creek that's the first game i played at a con mm -hmm. before i played that and, and i was like wow this is you know and it really it's gotten almost no use despite the extreme cost and the fact that their support is lousy so what, what's your final uh, overall score i don't know what the weightings are <laughs> i'm like i'm like mine only goes to 40. okay mm -hmm. all right so my it looks like my final score is 84. Uh, 82. Okay. All right. <laughs> Tom, Tom does more math. Yeah, Tom does more math. Yeah. It looks like my final score is 82. Okay. And I think it's a very solid score. Probably the highest I've given any rule set that I've reviewed. <laughs> the way that you refuse <laughs> to give out anything like higher than a 9. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, as, as I mentioned earlier, this is a $40 rule set, loose leaf. Uh, would you pay that much for GQ3? Absolutely. I, I've, I have. Well, <laughs> there you go. I obviously have as well and, and can highly recommend it at that price point. Uh, that's going to do it for uh, the review this week. Uh, be sure to check back next week for our you know, typical uh, full episode and then the following week for our next rule review. Uh, and if you like what we're doing here at Little Wars TV and you haven't already done so, please be sure to click subscribe down below. Thanks. See you next time.